Hello, everybody. We're glad to be back for Sunday School. It's Becky and Spencer. Mom. And we're going to start with some singing. Yeah. So we have a new song this week. Um, it's called Whatever You Do. <clears throat> okay, here we go. <laughs> Spencer. All right, we're going to start with a little activity. We are going to try to answer questions, and the way you're going to answer them is to go to a certain place in the room. All right, so I want you just to look around your room right now, and I want you to find a corner of a room that you could go to, a doorway, so whether it's an open doorway or whether it's a door that opens and <clears throat> closes the doorway and we'll be running around in circles. Those are the three options. So first question, what is your favorite color? If your favorite color is blue, and um, then you need to go to the corner of the room. If your favorite color is orange, you need to go to the doorway. And if your favorite color is pink, I want you to run around. Okay, so if your color is not one of those, uh, just choose one. Which one of those three is your favorite? So blue, corner, orange, doorway, and pink, run around in circles. All right. All right, next. Uh, my next question is, how many siblings, how many brothers or sisters do you have? If you have zero, go to your corner. If you have one to two siblings, go to the doorway. If you have three to four siblings or more, run around in circles. All right, we are going to do one more. If you could choose where you wanted to live when you grow up, or now for that matter, if you got to choose, would you choose a place that looks like a desert? Go to the corner. If you would choose desert, <clears throat> mountains, go to the doorway. Or if you would choose a city, run around in a circle. All right. So moving around like this, you can all come back now. All right because we probably made different choices. If you have siblings in your house, some of you might have been in the corner and some of you in the doorway. This is how people in the global world and around us move around and move to other countries and move to other places, sometimes because of jobs, sometimes because of um, family. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today is people that move to other places. Um, there are also immigrants when we move from one country to another country and we are trying to make a new start. Um, a lot of times because there are, are things that are unsafe for us where we're living that we move to a new place or try and go to a new place to find safety. And what does God and Jesus say about that? So we're going to read our story. 
<clears throat> so Spencer is going to start us off. Okay. So our story this week is from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 through 22. Deuteronomy, that's a big word. Um, so, hey, everybody, what is it that God wants from you? He wants just this. He wants your reverence, your faithfulness, your love, your dedication. And for you to obey the commandments. They're for your own good. All the sky and all the stars belong to God, the earth and everything in it, and listen. God chose you, your people, your ancestors and your children, you. Do not cut yourself off from God. Soften your heart. God is above all, but concerned for those who have nothing, caring for those who are stranded and alone, providing for them. You too remember when you were immigrants, strangers in Egypt. Let that memory stir compassion in you for the strangers among you. Worship only God, hang on tightly to God, praise God. Know that everything wonderful you have seen, God has done. Remember that your ancestors entered Egypt, only 70 of them. And now there are as many of your people as there are stars above. Yes. All right, now we are going to get your coloring sheets. If you would like to color, find your coloring sheets. If you are the younger group, you have a storybook that looks like that. If you are from the older group, it's a picture that looks like that, that says, love the stranger from Deuteronomy. Just like that, okay? And so go ahead and start coloring, and we are going to talk about this. So, Spencer, can you imagine some of the situations that may cause people to leave their homeland and go to a new place? You know, um, <clears throat> I can't imagine them, but I do know, um, like, there are instances of when there's wars and and um, maybe... Um, I just thought of famine, which means there's no food. So if people are very hungry and they're looking for a place that um, has food for them to eat would be a reason. Yeah, a friend of mine, um, her family had to leave their home country because of a war that was happening. And so they came to America when she was um, a, a very little kid and she's a, a friend of mine that's in college. And yeah, yeah, it's it's um, really sad though that they had to leave their homeland for that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, famine, um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Sometimes, if it's not a war, sometimes countries become just violent, whether there are people that the government is not quite stable, and so people who are causing um, violence in the streets, and so uh, people just can't live where they live in fear all the time of being harmed, and so they might leave for that reason. Yeah. How do you imagine it feels to be an immigrant? I would think it would be so scary, you know? Um, the kids at home right now, you think about if you had to go to your first day of school and you didn't know anybody and you didn't know the language maybe, that would be so scary. And imagine if you were leaving your country, your family, your home, and leaving in hopes that it would be a better place, it would be so scary. But maybe exciting, the, the hope, maybe the feeling of, we're going to get out of the thing that's really harming us right now. And we're going to move to a place that has opportunity. A lot of people see America as the place of opportunity, the place to be able to be free. And so that hope may be inside of them too. Yep. <clears throat> <clears throat> so God cares deeply for people who are the least powerful, especially women, children, immigrants, as our Bible story says. Can you imagine some reason God shows extra care for them? Ooh. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, we want to get really like deep. Um, sometimes they are the people that are treated the worst in society. Um, and so uh, I think it's that God shows extra care for them because they need it the most. And when we're compassionate, we, sh we care for those who need our help the most. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like that answer. 
Yep. <clears throat> Not only does God love immigrants, but our Bible passage says, you must also love immigrants. I wonder what ways we can show compassion to immigrants in our lives and world. What comes to mind? Yeah, I'm wondering if any of you at home right now have kids in your classroom that, um, or in your school that maybe are immigrants that have come and maybe don't know English quite yet or are um, overcoming, you know, trying to get winter clothes. Maybe they came from a really warm country and so now they need all of the things you need for winter here in South Dakota. So um, if you have friends like that, those would be people that you can be kind to and maybe help show them the ropes of what South Dakota weather is like or what how to how to speak English. All of those things can be helpful to people who are here. We also at our church, we have two organizations there that help the immigrant because as a church, we want to <clears throat> be aligned, be with people who are doing Jesus's work, God's work, right? And so South Dakota Voices for Peace is a group that um, is housed, their offices are in our church and they help the immigrant. So people who have come here and need a pathway to stay here, to a path to citizenship, um, South Dakota Voices for Peace helps legally helps them do that so that is one way we can be like Jesus and help those and then we have a group called the Naomi Project and sometimes when people come they come to work here and they don't know but the person that they work for is not kind and um, maybe doesn't pay them or doesn't treat them very well and um, they need help getting out of that situation and the Naomi Project is is a place where they can help get them out of that situation and help them find a path to stay here and work maybe for themselves or for another company that that would treat them kindly so both of those groups um are in our church and spencer and i have gotten to know the people that work there and it's really great to know that our church is helping in ways even if it's helping give a space for them to work from so that is a is a great thing. All right, we're going to move on to our compassion and action. I hope that you were coloring and enjoying it. I'm going to hang this picture up. I'm getting quite a few pictures on my board here. Here we go. <clears throat> Look at all my pictures. I hope you're saving your pictures somehow too at your house to tell all the stories. All right, the compassion in action this week, because we're talking about immigrants that come from all over the world and move around to different countries, I want you to get out a globe at your house or a map or just call a map up on your computer, <clears throat> whatever works for you, and find a country or a continent and put your finger on it. Maybe if your family wants to learn a little bit about that country, that would be great. And then say a little prayer. Say a prayer for the country that um, is on the map. And if you want to do it to lots of countries, feel free. Some people really love to uh, learn from a map. And so say some prayers for people that live around the world and maybe moving to new places. Probably not right now. Most of our most of the countries are not allowing any movement because of the pandemic. So. That actually, you could say a prayer for those people who have to stay in a country that is not safe for them right now because of the pandemic. <clears throat> so you can pray for them for that. So, all right, let's sing and then we'll say our prayer. Good, okay. So yeah, let's sing our song that we sang at the beginning of Sunday school today, Whatever You Do. <laughs>
Right. Let's gather together <clears throat> for a time of prayer. And we will take a deep breath in, hold it, and blow it out. Dear God, thank you for teaching us today how important immigrants are. We pray for all the immigrants around the world who are in different places trying to make a new life. We pray for their safety. We pray for those who are powerless and feel forced to move from their homes. Help us remember them in our prayers and be hospitable. Give us and our church courage and compassion to help immigrants in ways we can. And all God's children said, Amen. See you next week. Bye.